Now let's talk about the anatomy and where the language areas are located in the brain. So the language areas of the brain are actually associated with the handedness of the patient. So this is why when a patient does have a stroke, for instance, the clinician is going to ask, what is their dominant hand? Because this is going to help indicate whether or not the language centers are going to be in the left hemisphere or the right hemisphere. So for instance, right-handed individuals are going to almost exclusively have their language centers in the left hemisphere. So greater than 99% of right-handed individuals are going to have their language centers in their left hemisphere. But what's interesting is when we look at left-handed individuals, the location of the language centers in left-handed individuals is going to be more varied. For instance, 70% of left-handed individuals are going to have it in the right hemisphere. So this is very interesting. We see that left-handed individuals, majority of them are going to have it in the right hemisphere. It's going to be on the opposite side. But in 15% of left-handed individuals, it's going to be in the left hemisphere. It's going to be the same as those right-handed individuals we talked about before. And then the other 15% are going to have it bilaterally. They're going to have it in both hemispheres, both right and left hemispheres. So the language centers are going to be shared between both hemispheres. So very interesting. So if you look at the brain, here is the right hemisphere and here's the left hemisphere. So again, as I mentioned before, the majority of patients are going to have it in their left hemisphere. So when we actually look at the brain and the left side, we can see two very important areas of the brain that are going to be important in the language. One of them is known as Broca's area and the other one is known as Wernicke's area. And we're going to talk about these in more detail in the next slide. Before we actually get into looking at those particular language centers, let's look at an overview of the brain itself because we're going to need to know the different lobes in order to better understand where those language centers are located. So the brain has four lobes, the frontal lobe, the temporal lobe, the parietal lobe, and the occipital lobe. And what we're going to see is that the language centers are going to reside in the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe. So we can see more specific details of the brain in this schematic here. So again, frontal lobe, temporal lobe, parietal lobe, and occipital lobe. And here's another image of the brain showing Broca's area and Wernicke's area. And these two language centers are connected to each other. And we're going to talk about that connection here in a moment. Let's first talk about Broca's area. Broca's area is located in the posterior inferior frontal lobe. So if you're to look at the brain, this is the anterior of the brain or the front toward the front. And this is the posterior toward the back. Here is the inferior aspect of the brain and here's the superior aspect. So Broca's area is in the posterior inferior frontal lobe. So this is the frontal lobe here. It's going to be in the posterior part of the frontal lobe and the inferior part. So it's going to be located in and around this area here. Broca's area is involved in initiating speech motor control of spoken language and sentence formation. So it's very important for controlling speech output. Moving on to Wernicke's area. Wernicke's area is located in the posterior superior temporal lobe. So here is the temporal lobe here in this area. It's going to be at the more posterior aspect of the temporal lobe and it's going to be superior. So it's going to be located in this area here. Wernicke's area is involved in understanding spoken language and planning use of words. It's involved in comprehension. So it's going to be very important as well. And then another important part of the brain is going to be the angular gyrus. So the angular gyrus is going to be located in and around the Wernicke's area. So it's going to be adjacent to Wernicke's area. It's involved in understanding and relaying written language to other areas of the brain and comprehending words. And another very important structure for language is the arcuate fasciculus. So the arcuate fasciculus is going to be a neuronal bundle or connection that connects Broca's area and Wernicke's area. So connects Wernicke's area and Broca's area. 